Brian Adams, day three, scene 29, take one. Hi there, my name is Ryan Alice and I'm doing a video project entitled All I've Learned by 28. Now I'm going to talk about the last step in our 10 step process to building a company from startup to its first million dollars in sales and that is about building systems. What are systems? Systems are collections of processes that can run independent of you, that can run without you. And as your business grows, you'll need to build systems and processes that can be automated as much as possible. You'll need to build distribution systems, inventory systems, marketing systems, customer support systems, research and development systems, accounting and hiring systems, among many others. Systems are rules, policies, and procedures that trained individuals can repeat as your company grows and run independent of you. John C. Maxwell once wrote that achievement comes to someone when he is able to do great things for himself. Success comes when he empowers followers to do great things with him. Significance comes when he develops leaders to do great things for him. But legacy is created only when a person puts his organization into the position to do great things without him. Let's look at some additional examples of systems that will be built in an entrepreneurial venture. You'll need to build systems for performance reviews, simple things like getting food during the day to feed your employees if needed, to train your new people, to notify customers when your product is not working, to review the operations of your business, to gain and collect feedback on your product, to do expense planning and financial planning and pay for purchases, to pay salaries through payroll, to determine how happy your customers are, maybe implementing a net present or excuse me, a net promoter score for your customers. Vacation requests for your employees, you know, testing your marketing and the scientific me methodology that we talked about in section eight on marketing. Do requests for proposal management when people are coming to you with uh, potential, that are potential clients with a proposal. How can you respond to that and decide which you want to do? How can you set up your hardware and provide tax documentation and legal contracts and provide full 360 feedback to your employees? How do you document what they're doing? How do you communicate internally and externally? And how do you plan your books? These are just a few examples of the hundreds or thousands of systems that will be running in complex, large organizations. Now, it's important in the entrepreneurial phase to be light on bureaucracy. And so it's important to have efficient systems that run smoothly. And as you grow, you can put in place more complex processes. Now, after the first year in business, where the success is really about what you do and the product you build, your success is determined more by the people you hire than by you. So particularly after the first year or even the first few months, stop trying to do everything. Hire smart people and help them put systems in place so that things happen even when you're not there. For our accounting system at Connect, we use a tool that's online called QuickBooks Online from Intuit. And you really want to make sure that you track your books accurately from the beginning. In any business, a financial system, the accounting system is truly the lifeblood. And in addition to the system related to human capital, some of the most important systems. And you always want to separate your personal expenses and your business expenses. Otherwise, you might pierce the corporate veil, which might make your tax, you might increase your liability and reduce your tax deductions. Oftentimes, people put these systems in place that end up causing way too much time to be spent in meetings. And one thing I'd encourage you to do as an entrepreneur, or as a leader, is to adopt what's called a maker schedule. Paul Graham once wrote, once wrote a very influential article on the difference between maker schedules and manager schedules. And a manager schedule is one that goes from meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting, maybe six, seven, or eight, or nine meetings per day. You may have experienced that yourself. A maker schedule, however, is generally better for someone who is designing things or developing things. And what that is, what, what the core behind this is that for someone who is an engineer or designer, someone who is a creative person or someone working on hard problems, oftentimes the least amount of time the brain needs to be able to truly focus on solving a difficult problem is time in blocks of about four hours. And so if you can't provide an uninterrupted block of four hours to your employees during their day, they might actually get very little done. 
And so at Connect, what we have done is we've have, we have one meeting that lasts about 25 minutes in the middle of the day where everyone goes around and shares their accomplishments from the prior day and what they're working on the next day. And before that meeting, we'll have about a three and a half to four and a half hour work block. And after that meeting, we'll have another three and a half to four hour work block. Ends up being a very productive day that has two maker blocks right within it. We've found that to be much more effective than having six, seven, eight meetings a day where you're constantly pulling your people that are the most creative innovators in your organization out of their focus zone, out of their state of flow, as Michele Csikszentmihalyi says. So we have a daily stand-up, and at Eye Contact, one of the things we implemented with our executive team at 9.46 every morning, which was a very specific time so that everyone would be on time every day, was to have a daily stand-up where we took 10 minutes and around our seven-person executive team just shared what we were doing that day. So at different companies, you'll innovate and have different meeting systems and different uh, processes within the organization. The key is you want to think about things consciously, like meetings and processes and accounting, so that you end up creating systems that are effective and efficient and enable you to build a business that operates eventually, even without you. Thanks for watching this section on systems.